All hail, there's a new king in town, young not old, going round. Blue and white, red but not green. Okay, I'll stop quoting one of Prince's greatest hits. But when we talk about greatest, for a while now the most massive, and by cause of action the most luminous star, was thought to be a giant wolf rayet star in the large Magellanic Cloud, known as R136A1. Recent studies, however, have found one that is potentially even bigger. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we are continuing our brightest star series with possibly the brightest star ever known. So let's get to it. Westerhout 49 is a strong galactic thermal radio source discovered by Gart Westerhaus in 1958. Its distance is estimated to be about 36,000 light years, and it lies in the galactic plane about the same distance from the galactic centre as does the Sun. A study published using the Very Large Telescope found the presence of a very massive star in the central cluster of this star-forming region. The parameters of the star are poorly constrained, but it could have a luminosity at the highest limit of up to 7 million times that of the Sun. In addition, it's estimated to have a mass at the highest limit of 370 solar masses, and possibly even more. This places it amongst the most luminous and massive stars known. Strangely enough, the star itself known as Westerhout 49-2, is heavily reddened, indeed by nearly five magnitudes in the K-band, the most of any star in the region, and this does make it quite unusual for such a massive young star. That said, Westerhout 49-2 remains classified in the O-class, and is an evolved slash star, which is a special type of wolf rayet star. It has a surface temperature of around 35,500 Kelvin, and potentially a radius over 55 times that of the Sun. As is often the case with such stars, there is significant uncertainty about Westerhout 49-2's properties. For example, its luminosity may be anywhere between 2.5 million suns and as much as 8 million suns. Moreover, there is an even greater uncertainty about its mass, which could range anywhere between 110 at the minimum limit and 320 at the max. Not only this, but the star could also be a binary, and Westerhout 49-2, alongside other giant stars in the area like Westerhout 49-1 and 49-12, are all bright X-ray sources. If this is the case, their masses would be lower than the predicted mass if they were single stars. What this means is we're going to have to watch this space until more details are known to be able to fully crown the king. We've mentioned before here on the channel that calculating the habitable zones for such stars seems a futile exercise. This is because such stars have exponentially smaller lifespans. Stars like R136A1 and Westerhout 49-2 are expected to live for just between 2 and 4 million years. Obviously this means the possibilities for life to form in such a space of time seem very remote. That said, the initial spark that starts the long processes of life may be carried on once the stars themselves are vanquished. Variables such as tidal heating, thick, thick Hyacinian planets with atmospheres, or perhaps radioactive decay within a planet's core. So let's for fun and for the sake of this argument, let's have a tentative look at what the habitable zone for Westerhout 49-2 might be, the area where we might expect to see water flow. One of the most voluminous stars in existence, VY Canis Majoris, would have a habitable zone starting at around 600 and stretching out to 1200 astronomical units. Huge as this is, it is dwarfed by the R136A1 star, which would have a corresponding habitable zone beginning at 2,500 astronomical units and stretching out to 5,100. Westerhout 49-2 is somewhat awkward given the inconclusive nature of the data, and I'll offer the caveat that some of the figures may be revised downwards in the future. Let's take Westerhout 49-2 on its upper limits. This would give us a habitable zone beginning at 4,129 AU, or 24 light days, and ending at a phenomenal 8,423 astronomical units, or as much as 13% of a light year, or 47 light days across. So we wonder what might such a star appear like if it were to approach our solar system. At its current distance of 36,000 light years, Westerhout 49-2 is a relatively dim star with a plus 2.72 apparent magnitude and is found in the constellation of Aquila. As it lies in the galactic plane about the same distance from the galactic centre as does the Sun, it's relatively occulted and made more difficult to see by this very same galactic plane. But what if we were to move it closer? The most luminous star within 1,000 light years is the blue-white supergiant of Rigel, currently sitting shining brightly in the lower right-hand corner of Orion. 
It has a luminosity of anywhere between 61,000 and 363,000 suns, and a measurable apparent magnitude on average of plus 0.13. As we see the Orion constellation make its way across the sky, Rigel is now replaced with Westerhout 49.2. At 864 light years distance, it has an apparent magnitude of minus 5.33, which makes it over 10 times brighter in the sky than Jupiter has ever been, and between 2 and 3 times brighter than Venus at its very brightest. Westerhout 49.2, again at Rigel's distance of 864 light years, is unsurprisingly far away now the brightest object in the sky after the Sun and the Moon so bright it would shine all day and all night in our skies. Let's continue then and move Westerhout 49.2 even closer. At 30 light years we can find the famous stars like Arcturus or Pollux. And let's imagine then that Westerhout 49.2 were to replace the yellow giant of Pollux at some 34 light years distance. It now becomes as bright as minus 12.49 apparent magnitudes, which is more or less as bright as the full moon. An astonishing feat at such a distance, I'm sure you'll agree. In our final graphic today, we move to a position of 0.05 light years, or some 3,162 astronomical units away from us. For perspective, Voyager 1 is approximately 150 astronomical units, so we're talking about a distance of some 22 times further away than the furthest thing we've ever sent. The incredible thing about this is because it would mean that Westerhout 49.2, with an apparent magnitude of minus 26.7, would now outshine even our own sun in brightness, some 3,160 times further away from us than the sun. Westerhout 49.2 is an ultra-giant star located in the Aquila constellation of the Milky Way. It's part of a group of stars that lie around 36,000 light years away. Strangely, for such a massive star it has a reddish tinge to it. We're not fully clear of its properties, but it has the potential to be the most massive star ever known. If this star to approach our solar system, it would outshine every star in our local 1000 light year area by many, many multitudes of degrees. At 3162 times further away than our own star, it would indeed replace our sun and become the brightest object Earth has ever seen. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. And if you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below and it could be next week that your idea shows up. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well and I'll see you on the next one.